Ecclesiastes chapter 11, Vanity of Youth. Cast thy bread upon the waters. Now, you know, bread is a type of word. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Uh, Isaiah 55, 8 through 11. Cast thy bread upon the waters. Revelation 17, 15. People. For thou shalt, the promise, find it after many days. Isaiah 55, 11, Psalms 126, verse 6, and 2 Chronicles 9, 6. It's about sowing the seeds, about getting the word out. And there's a promise here. You, you'll get it. You'll find, Listen, you think tracks and getting the word out ain't doing nothing. You'll get a reward. For trying to win souls. That's all you're told to do. You're not told to win them. You're told just to go. And if God tells you in Mark 16 to go you know the world and preach the gospel. You think God, God has rules and regulations about wages and earnings. And he promised he'll give you reward. Give a portion to seven. And also to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. It's a supply. Give it out. Proverbs 11, 24, 2 Corinthians 8, 12. And that goes with verse 1. There's no time of rest. Tomorrow we may wake up in a country that will not allow us to do anything. As far as the scriptures in the Bible. And we'll have to have an underground church. Which you will not be able to have the freedom that we have today right now. You may wake up tomorrow and be bedridden for the rest of your life. You may wake up tomorrow, end up in a hospital, then go to a nursing home for the rest of your life. If the clouds be full of rain. So what's that tell you? Clouds contain moisture. Ooh. <clears throat> they empty themselves upon the rain, upon the earth, excuse me. So a cloud, 977 thereabout B.C., Solomon tells you that clouds are moisture, and when the cloud gets too much, then you get rain. How long did it take the scientists to learn the water cycle that we learn in chapter 1, verse 3? Amos 9.6. And if a tree fall toward the south, or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. Wow. Is that so hard to not understand? <clears throat> a cloud gets so filled with water that it rains. And when a tree falls down, death, there's no second chances. You know, what we say is, you know, if a tree falls in a forest, it doesn't make a sound. If a tree falls in a forest, there it lies. <clears throat> he that observeth the wind shall not sow. And he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. Oh, looks like wind. I'm not going to sow today. It looks like rain. Get so. He's using it as an excuse. You know, looks like he's going to do something and, you know, can't go to work today. It's raining. It's an excuse. As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit. John 3, 3, verses 4 or 5 thereabouts. So this, this, there's nothing, John 3, 8, I got the note here in the Bible. So Jesus quoted from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5. Talking to Nicodemus, who he says, aren't you a teacher?
So according to Jesus, Jesus quotes what Solomon writes. You know, we've been listening to uh, videos and stuff, archaeology and all that, just to get dates and information. On, and, you know, it's a wonder how, you know, the, the, we don't believe there's such a thing. We don't believe this. We believe a, a, a volcano. Well, there was one story in particular about the They just didn't even believe it. It was, a, it was just a story. Wow. Nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Well, today in science we know you don't know nothing. You know we might get to heaven, have God have a lesson on what man uh, to uh, what's it called when uh, they try to do it to the Hebrew boys in Daniel. You know they try to, uh, to refit them from their Hebrew ways. You know, in concentration camps, they'll bring you into into a room and they'll they'll teach you things that are not so. I think God's going to take us to heaven. He's going to de teach us of all what man has taught us and the lives of man. Reprogram. You got to get all that junk out of you. You know, don't listen to. They didn't know. They'll be the first class, ladies and gentlemen. Brothers and sisters, and, and my bride, I'm going to teach you the simplicity of gravity. Now, look how simple it was. You know, you might see a picture of God's hand. <laughs> you, know, you know why when they went to the moon, they because my hand wasn't there. <laughs> you weren't supposed to be there. Well, as long as you stayed in the air, if I kept you down. You know? I don't know. I'm trying to say, if man thinks he knows anything and everything, he don't. You wait till we get the eternal truth in eternity. And you know, babies will be born in, in, in eternity. So. Even so, thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. Agnostic. I don't know. Solomon just said, you don't know the works of God. You may think you know, but you don't know. You may know, but you don't know all. So, In the morning, sow thy seed. Put it out. See, that goes with verses 1 and 2. Verses 3 is, is, is clouds empty themselves. A death of a tree that falls down. He that observes the wind, the clouds will not sow or reap. You don't know the way of the Spirit, John 3, 3 to 8. In the morning sow thy seed. And in the evening withhold not thy hand. For thou knowest not whether it shall prosper. If, you're, if you try to witness and, and, and you try to do what God did, you know that you don't see results. And these people, oh, we got 14 saved. What's your problem? You didn't get anybody saved this weekend? You ain't doing the true work. All right, if you're doing it, go plant a tomato seed and tell me how many tomato plants you're going to get this week. If you're going to get any. Doesn't God liken the, the, the soul winning, the witnessing, as in plants? Tell me a plant that you put the seed in the ground that, that you get that plant. All right, you know, I, I had planted Paul's water. Okay, you watered. Now, okay, the plant shows up. Where's the fruit? It don't come right away. There is no plant that you put the seed in. Boing, there it is. In the millennium, that would be nice. But right now, no. If you claim that you, all the seed you plant and you get results this week from all those seeds, you are a freak of nature. Now, if you get one, two, maybe, not every week, and then for that one person that did receive Christ, there's been sowing, there's been planting, there's been plowing, there's been fertilizing, there's been watering. 
And don't you rejoice because God gives the increase. You get someone a gospel track today and they put it in their pocket, you have no idea. I remember one time growing up, I went to my mom's apartment and made a sandwich or something. I pulled open the drawer to look for a knife and all. And I, I put open her drawer and it, there's tracks that we've been giving her. And many, 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 many years after that, she received Christ as her Savior. You don't know. Either this or that. Either they get saved or they don't get saved. Wow, look at that. Look at the lines that Solomon leaves as far as witnessing. They'll get saved or they won't get saved. Or whether they both shall be alike good. You may have two people receive Christ as their Savior. They're not going to be alike. You may in your lifetime have a hundred people receive Christ as their Savior. They're not going to be alike. Some are going to be duds. Very few will go on to do what the Word says. You know, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many will go into hell. Few will enter into the straight gate. And the few that enter the straight gate, the fewest will actually do what God wants them to do. I've come to learn that the fewest of the fewest of the few is the, is the way of God. Truly, the light is sweet. And a pleasant thing. It is for the eyes to behold the sun. I'm trying to read it. Children don't play or be outside. And from the sun you get vitamin D, I believe it is. Uh, verse number eight, existent alism, E X I S T E N T I A L I S M, one of them isms. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all the year, I mean, you may have days and weeks and months of problems, but I mean, if you've got the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit even in trouble. Yet let him remember the days of darkness. Uh-oh. For they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. That's a hard statement. You're going to have more bad days than you will have good days in your life. You know what? Everybody you know and love and don't love will die. Somebody around you is going to have a disease if not you. Some of, somebody around you or you are going to have trouble. You know, with each birthday, your body's getting older. The more birthdays you get, the more chances you're going to die. And for all are going to die. Unless the Lord tarries. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thy heart, not head. And in the sight of thy eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Young man, you better realize God is going to judge you. And I have not really yet have heard a message out of any pulpit. Where they said, we're, we're going to take a series of lessons. We're going to describe what is going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Christian. <coughs> Excuse me. Not 
the lost people. Lost people will be judged upon their rejection of Jesus Christ. But all the things that Christians Let's talk about the wood, hay, or stubble. Let's talk about the gold, the precious stone, and the silver. Young man, you're going to be judged. You're going to stand before God. Imagine that, a philosopher like Solomon telling me that. Oh, I got me uh, the jukebox people. I got me the vineyards. And I got me the orchards. And I got me gold. And I got me drunk. And I got me everything. I looked at these people. I looked at that people. I looked at the rich. I looked at the poor. I, and you're going to stand before God. How young is young man? You know what I think? And this is what I think. And I think could stink. And I believe he says young man in, in 1 John. Young man is, is to be old enough to know that you are a sinner. That what you're doing is wrong. Try telling that to a four-year-old. Put that cookie down. You're going to stand before God. Hmm? Hmm. Just a chocolate cookie. What's wrong? Right? When a young man's out, not in the eyes of his parents, not in the eyes of his pastor, not in the eyes of anybody, and the things that he does, God sees, behold, the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the evil and the good. He's making a list and checking it twice. See, we got to water that song down to make it, because we think it's Satan Claus. No, it's God. God don't see what I'm doing. God saw what David was doing when he couldn't sleep one night. Just took a little walk. Come on, Solomon. God don't see you doing it. 1,000 little wives on the wall, 1,000 wives on the wall, one fall down, 999 wives on the wall, 999 wives on the wall. I mean, come on, God told us everything. Huh? Amen. What would you do with Tamar in your own bedchamber? God recorded it. Young man, you're going to stand before God. You may lie to your parents, you may lie to your boss, you may lie, but you won't lie before God. All these things, God will, God doesn't forget anything. All these things, except it's under the blood, 1 John 1, 9. So the way God will forget if you put it under the blood. Man, I'm sorry for stealing that cookie. <laughs> And then you steal the next cookie. Maybe the first cookie wasn't wiped out under the blood. You didn't mean it. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart. Uh oh, look at that. Get rid of it. Not good. Second Corinthians seven ten. And put away evil from thy flesh. I think Paul tells Timothy, flee youthly, youthly lust. For childhood and youth are vanity, emptiness, no plan for the future. You're just starting out. You don't know everything. You think you know everything. You don't realize that your actions will... will, will will have a consequence reaction law of thermodynamics dad why don't you believe me I'm telling you the truth dad why don't you believe me? you only lied to me 20 times since last year I'm supposed to believe you now you don't realize the consequences of your life What do, you, what do you mean I'm fired? I, I, only, I only called out work three times this week because it was nice for the beach. What do you mean you're firing me? You haven't learned the consequences. You, you know, you got to be there. They expect you to be there.
that you don't realize character. And I don't know what age character starts building. But I know the Bible says that people are like trees, and you start producing fruit on your tree, and people look at that fruit like, uh huh. Jesus said, Wherefore by their fruit you should know them. Liar, theft, stealing, angriness, rebellion. That's a nice tree. Untaithfulness. That's fruit you got on your tree. Any age. And what you need is you need God to come out with the axe and the saw and the ladder and start chopping away those branches. And I forget the word is where they take another branch and they and they put it into a tree to grow fruit. I got the word cut in my head, I can't get it. That's what happens with age? All the words are damned. Grafting, that's it. See, that's why I got away. He takes over my mind. Stops. You know, you got to have the Lord graft into you as a tree the good stuff. Cut off the bad stuff. Because you need to realize for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. God is judge. We looked at things here of, of witnessing excuses don't expect everything tomorrow oh, look at that my mom and dad have a house and a car I'm gonna go to work and I'm gonna get that tomorrow when you get your first page you could what is this listen I'm 40 something years old I just look at this week's page and say what is that The economy that we are in today. And you may not get what somebody else got. You may have to wait to glory before you see the results. And you can't make excuses. If you got something to do, you need to go do it. Well, I don't understand. Well, you need to know how to understand. You need to seek to know what you expected of you to do. And you better be able to train others. And you better do the work, verse 6. Verse 7, light. It's not a time to sleep. Time of vitamin. We live in a mixed up world today where, you know, the most third shift and all that, 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 that defies the Bible. And if you live many, many years, expect hard times. You know, you, you know, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something right now, parent, and you, you need to get this out of your children's life. You need to stop having happy birthdays for your children. Because you know what you think, they think every time a new year comes, everything's wonderful, I get all the presents I want, I get all the cake I want, and then you send them off as an adult, and they're like, spoiled. You know, there's one thing I was never, I was talking to my wife, I think last month about this. There's one thing I was never taught in school, and there are things I was taught in school that shouldn't have been taught. <coughs> I was never taught in school how to deal with arthritis or pains like that. I was never told that one day, you know what? My body's going to act in certain ways that. 
Hey, I may enjoy, enjoy a bowl of cereal, snap, crack, and pop, but when I get over 40, my body's going to snap, crack, and pop. We will teach you today healthy eating. You mean with the, with, the, with the chemicals they put in today's food? Eat vegetables. You know they put chemicals on the fruit? You know they use chemicals to make that fruit grow? And as a young man, rejoice and, 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 and get all you can as being a young man. And if you grow up, you're going to have sorrows. They got all these DDAD and, and abbreviations in verse 10 for children today. That's not needed. You're training your children to be druggies. And then, you're, then, you, then you turn around and say, we have a war on drugs. Why? You got the kid in grade school and half a dozen drugs already. I was one of them. Ritalin child. My parents told me the school I was in first grade... First grade. No, it had to be in kindergarten. No, first, first, whatever. I don't remember. But this I know for sure. The school said they were going to refuse to do anything for me and just let me sit in the classroom. Unless my mother put me on that drug. And I'm not going to go on what changes happened after that. But the school system told my mother, and I, I was born in 68, and you figure out what year and all that that was for growing in school and all that for first grade. They told my parents they weren't going to have to do anything to me and for me. Name your school that's on Montauk Avenue used to be. Used to be. All schools should be used to be. Told my parents back in those, whatever that year that was that if they didn't put me on the drugs, they weren't going to have nothing to do with me. And look at all the drugs they give the kids today. And they got these zombie uh, apocalypse and all that. You know what the zombie apocalypse is? Is when you graduate them from school, then they send them out in the world. More drugs. There's no more free. More drugs. More drugs. That's what you train them in the school. You know what I mean? You need to get that out of the children. Childhood is not a time to be sadness and sorrow. That's later on in life. Now you're reaping. Now you're reaping. 